Welcome back to my channel, Maths with Ami. Uh, this is another video on probability, and in this uh, video, we're going to look at contingency tables and how, and how you can use uh, contingency tables to determine probability of events. Please, if you have not subscribed to my channel, Maths with Ami, please do so. Please subscribe, and if you do like uh, the video, or you've enjoyed the video, or if you have any comments, please do so. So, please. Don't forget, please subscribe. In this uh, video, I'm going to show you what a contingency table is or what a two way table is. Then we're going to show you how we can determine probabilities using contingency table. Now we're going to look at another way in which uh, sample spaces can be represented, and this is known as a contingency table. Now, a contingency table is a table summary. It's a summary in a table form of large data set of categorical data of two variables with a number of categories. So it's data, two variable data, but each of the variables they have categories, subcategories for each variable there. Okay. So we also refer to a contingency table as a two-way table, and we'll illustrate that that to you. But the main purpose is if you have large data sets, you can summarize the data in a contingency table. Now let's look at an example of a contingency table. Here I'm going to take a table that will reflect gender and home language. Right? So as we said there, we have two variables. So the one variable there would be gender. Now if I look at gender here, gender we have two categories here, male and female. Right? So I've got two subcategories there, male and female. Then we look at the other variable, which is home language, and there I've got three subcategories, English, Afrikaans, and Isikosa there. So I've got my gender in the rows, and I've got my home language in the columns there. And I've also got a total column there, and I also have a total for the rows there. Right? So what we need to do here is, I've taken an example, I've, got, I've omitted some of the data here. So we want to complete the table, right? So if you look at this one here, if we look at this column, I can work out this missing value here. And that missing value, because I've got a total of 35, 35 minus 15, I can calculate that, and that is going to be 20. Now if I look at this row, there's a missing value here, the total is missing. So I just find the sum of 20, 15, and 10. And that gives me 45, right? And if I look at this, the row of the females, I now have a total of 55. So there's a missing value here. And that missing value would be 55 minus 15 minus 30, which gives me 10. Now here I can see I need to have the total for this column. Total for that column there would be 15 and 20, which is 25. I can get the total for the Isikosa column. And that's 10 and 30, that is going to be 40. And then I can find the total there for the uh, for, the, uh, for this column here, and that is 45 and 55, which is exactly 100. I can just cross check in this row here, 35 plus 25 plus 40 also equals to 100, right? Now let's just briefly explain uh, the table here. As you can see, I've got the two variables, I've got gender, so if we look at this 20 that we have here, this 20 that we have circled, what does that 20 represent? It represents the number of males whose home language is English. If I look at this 10 here, this 10 represents the number of females whose home language is Afrikaans. What does this 45 represent? That 45 represents the total number of males. And what does this 25 represent here? This represents the total number who speak Afrikaans. And this one here, we have a total number, 100. And this 100 here is the total of the data that we have there, right? So you can see the total here, if we look at all the data that we collected, it's the 55 females and the 55 that gives me a total of 100. What's the total of the home languages also gives me 100 there. And this is now a contingency of two-way table. Two ways, you can see there we've got two variables, gender and home language. This is the case of a two by three. I can even have a very simple one, a two by two, 
We can have a three by three or any combination of that. Depends on how many subcategories you have on each in each variable. There. And we're going to show you how we can use a contingency or a two-way table to determine the probabilities. So let's consider this example here. We have uh, uh, data regarding gender and home language, right? So gender there, there we have our table, and you can see gender is the one variable, and home language is the other variable. And then we have two categories for gender, male or female. And then for home language, it's either English, Afrikaans, and Isiklosa, right? So we represent male with an M and F, and there we have got E, A, and X there. Now you see there's the data, so we now just have to complete this table. So we have to see if I have to look at male, how many males are there and how do we find that? We have to find the total there, right? How many females are there? We have to find the total. How many people take English? So we have to complete this table by getting the total. So let's get the total for English, 35, total for Afrikaans, 25, total for Isikosa is 40. And then we have to find the total for male. There are 45 males, and the total for females, that's 55. And then we can cross-check. If I add this total here, right, it must give me exactly the same if I find the total horizontally. And if we do check that, we see the total there is 100. Right? I've just used some cosmetic numbers to make the calculations a little bit easier. So 35 plus 25 plus 40 that gives me 100. 45 plus 55 is 100. So there I've completed my table. As you can see, there were two variables, and each variable had subcategories. So for gender, I had male, female, and for home language, I had English, Afrikaans, and you see, COSA, right? So let's use that contingency table now, and then we can get the probability of randomly selecting a male, right? So I want to select a male randomly so let's look at the males there there's the males and how many males are there that's correct 45 so and how many people are there all together in the survey there were 100 so the probability of getting a male is 45 over a 100 right 45 over 100 is in this case nicely 45 percent i can simplify that as 45 percent let's look at another example the probability of randomly selecting a person with English as a home language, right? So English, this is just a person with English, so I have to follow the English. And how many people have English as a home language? That's 35. So the probability there is 35 over 100. And 35 over 100 is just 35%, right? Now let's continue. We use the same contingency table, a completed contingency table. And let's look at this example now. We want the probability of randomly selecting a female whose home language is Afrikaans. So it's female and the language is Afrikaans. So we have to look at female. There's female and Afrikaans. And you see female and Afrikaans, they overlap. So there are actually 10 people who's with female and his home language is Afrikaans. So then the probability of that is going to be 10 over 100, and 10 over 100 is just 10 percent. Next, we want to find the randomly selecting a male whose home language is not Isikosa, right? So we want the males, but we want to see those whose home language is not Isikosa. So we don't want these people. So it's all the males, and then we don't want Isikosa, so it's the English and Afrikaans. And we see there it's the 20 and the 25. So how many males whose home language is not Isikosa? That is 20 plus 15. So the probability of getting that male and whose language is not Isikosa, so that gives me 20 plus 15, and that gives me 35 over 100, which is 35%. Now let's take another example where we can use determine probabilities uh, from contingency tables. In this case here, we want to determine whether two events are mutually exclusive. In this case, we're taking uh, female and Isikosa, right? So I want to see what's the probability of females and Isikosa. So that is female intersection Isikosa. And if you look at that from our table there, you can see where the intersection, that's right, it's 30, right? So there are 30 females who 
home language is Ishikosa. And the probability then would be 30 over 100, and 30 over 100 is 30%. But if this had to be mutually exclusive, what should the probability have been? Mutually exclusive means they should have nothing in common, right? In other words here, the probability is not equal to zero. And because it's not equal to zero, therefore we deduce that these two events are not mutually exclusive. If this value was at zero, exactly a zero, then we would have had mutually exclusive events here, right? Can you see some other mutually exclusive events? That's right. In this case here, male and female in this case, they are mutually exclusive, right? Because you can't be male and female at the same time, okay? Here you have your home language is English. So you, there you have English. You see there's no overlap between English and Afrikaans. There's no overlap between English and Isikosa. But if I look at male and Afrikaans, there's an overlap. There are 15, okay? If I look at females and Afrikaans, there are 10. But if I look at male, male and female don't overlap, so they would be mutually exclusive events. Now let's consider another example where the contingency table can be useful in probability questions. Let's take the same example of gender and home language. There we've got our uh, completed contingency table. Let's look at the question. Determine whether gender and home language are independent events. Right? So what I do is I can take one of the categories of gender and one of the categories of home language. Let's choose male and Afrikaans. So probability of male and Afrikaans. There's male and Afrikaans, see, so there are 15 of them being Afrikaans, uh, males whose home language is Afrikaans. So that probability there is 15 over 100, which is 15%, right? Next, we want to find the individual probabilities. Probability of male times probability of Afrikaans. Probability of male, if you just go back to that again, we see there are 45, so the probability there is 45. Probability of Afrikaans, there's the Afrikaans, and there are 25, so that's 25 over 100. Doing a little bit of calculation there, we get 11,25%. So now we notice that that 15% and that 11,25% are not the same. So therefore, we can deduce here that the probability of M and A is not equal to the probability of M times the probability of A. In other words, the product for independent event, the rule doesn't apply here. So therefore, they are not independent events. Now let's look at some examples for you, right? Uh, here we have a question there. We have a uh, contingency table. And you can see this contingency table is not complete. So first of all, you need to complete it. And then you have to work out some probabilities. And thereafter, I want you to show whether two of the events are mutually exclusive or not, or whether two of, of the events here are independent events. Right? The solutions you'll find at the end. Yeah, here we have a constant table of uh, 250 learners, and there's some information missing here. But we do mention here that the probability of a learner choosing a juice and a sandwich on that day is 0, comma. Four, eight. So we'll just uh, a little bit of extra twist in this question. And then you have to work out some probabilities. And here at the end, we want you to show whether choosing a juice and choosing a burger, whether these two events are independent events. Question here. And this is a three by two uh, contingency table. There's some missing values. So first of all, we need to complete it. And then we'll have to work, have to calculate the probability of randomly selecting a passenger being female and choosing water. In other words, a female who chose water. What's the probability of randomly selecting a female choosing water? Now let's look at the solutions to the exercise. Here are the solutions for question one. You may pause and then check your answers here. Here are the solutions to question two. And finally, here are the solutions to question three. If you enjoyed this video on 
contingency tables and you have now a better understanding of contingency tables uh, please if you uh, have not done so please subscribe to my channel maths with armin and also view other videos on probability uh, concepts and other mathematics topics don't forget please subscribe and share